mention the French mustaches and so on. But why not get an extra dozen bottles of beer for the wedding instead? Because Rosalia of Rosemont, my home. His home my must be a horn of plenty. Oh. The beer must gush forth like a geyser. And the dancing, too, as if from a cornucopia. Don't go and get married for lack of a button, and don't go get divorced for lack of the same. In our red home, there must be no petty bourgeois way of living, and no trousery squabbles. Go on, Rosalie Favorna, buy some. So long as you don't have a union card, you'd better not give him any trouble. He is the working class, like lava. From a volcano, he'll sweep away everything in his path. Comrade recipient's pants must be a horn of plenty. Oh, I did. No extra charge. <laughs> the best herrings caught by the state fishing trust with any kind of vodka. They're strictly a must. Oh, have red seals on them. That's it. 
that's it. The red guests all shout, bitter, bitter, make it sweet. And the red girl, already your spouse, puts her red, red, red straw. Vanya! What is going on? What is he jabbering about this cuttlefish in a cravat? What wedding? Whose wedding? The red working class nuptials of Elzevira Davidovna Renaissance. And my dear. <laughs> I have found another love. Who is daintier than you, I trow? Her sweater clings to all that is above, and her skirt to uh, everything below. Vanya, what about me? You mean you loved me and left me just like a sailor? We have parted like ships on the sea. We shoes. Somebody swipe them again. Do I have to leave them at the baggage room at Curse Station every night? Is that what I have to do? The Simpkin put him on to go see his she camel. <laughs> the whole time he was getting into him, he kept swearing. And then he said, tonight is the last time I shall appear in a new external aspect. One more suitable to my new social status. Ooh. That swine. You know the mess he leaves around the room these days is classier stuff than it used to be? Before it was empty beer bottles and fish tails, but now it's bottles of cologne and neckties, every color of the rainbow. Stop your jabbering. The guy gets himself a new necktie and you go on like he was Ramsey McDonald. That's just what he is. A oh, Ramsey McDonald. It's not the necktie that matters. He's tied to the tie, not the tie to him. He doesn't even think anymore. He's afraid to make my clothes spring. <laughs> you know, he paints over the holes in his clothes with enamel. No. Mm -hmm. If he sees a hole in his sock, he's in a hurry. He just dabs some ink over while he's dressing. <laughs> his feet are black even without the ink. Maybe his 
feet aren't black in the places where the holes are. Oh, what he should do, he should switch socks. Brilliant. <laughs> what an inventor. Oh, you know, you should take out a patent on that before somebody steals your idea. Hey. Sipkin over there. 
He's been wounded by a shot from the double-barreled eyes of a woman. Oh, no. no, you to corrupt the refined taste you've just begun to develop. I'll quit your bowing and scraping. You're liable to crack your noggin on the floor. Why? <laughs> I understand how it is, comrade Scrippkin. With your tender soul, their vulgar company is hard to put up with. Impossible, really. But try to keep your patience intact for just one more lesson. <laughs> the first foxtrot after the wedding ceremony is a very important step in life. The impression it makes will stay with you for the rest of your days. Now, try a few steps with an imaginary partner. Comrade Brian, I have to take off these shoes. <coughs> in the first place, they, they pinch. And in the second place, they wear out. Ha, 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 ha. 
<laughs> what with bourgeois encirclement and the building of socialism in one country, uh, you just don't have room to expand. Goat's Alley is no place for you. You need a world revolution, a breakthrough to Europe. Once you've smashed through the Chamberlains and the Poincarés, you'll be a sensation at the Moulin Rouge. What? And the Pantheon, too, with the beauty of your bodily movements. <laughs> Just remember them. Uh, uh, hold it. <laughs> That's excellent. But I must be running along. I've got to keep an eye on those ushers. I'll give them one drink before the wedding and not a drop more. Once they finish their job, they can drink straight out of the bottle for all I care. Au revoir. Mm. Uh, don't put on two ties together, especially if they're different colors. And for God's sakes, remember you can't wear a starched shirt outside your trousers.
Soraya! Gabby! 17 Luna Charsky suit, please. With my bags. A drop of water, so to speak. 
the future happiness of mankind. That which the common people call socialism. Oh,
check the boating equipment for the farming regions and give it an oiling. Uh, there was something wrong with it last time. The voices sounded squeaky. The farming regions? Uh, oh, right. I'll oil the central sections. And I'll clean out the throat of the Smolensk units. They were sounding hoarse again last week. And I'll have to tighten the arm for the Moscow office personnel. It's a bit out of whack, but a right one keeps tangling with the left. Uh, the plants in the uh, urals are ready. I will cut into Kursk steel mills. <laughs> They just installed a new unit out there for 62,000 voters at the second group of Zaporozhye power plants. Wow. It works fine. Never any trouble. You still remember what things were like in the old days? It must have been pretty silly, huh? <laughs> My mother took me to a meeting once. Huh. Carried me in her arms. Ugh. So many people there. Maybe a thousand. They just sat there. Like so many Eislers. Listening. Mm. It was a very important motion passed by just one vote. My mother was against it, but she couldn't raise her arms to vote because of me. Yes, well, things were pretty primitive back then. Yeah, back then, even machines like this wouldn't have helped. See, a man had to get his hand up first in order to be noticed, so he'd stick it right in the chairman's face, even put both hands up against his nose. And a voter like that, well, it's too bad he wasn't the ancient goddess Isis. Then he could have voted with all 12 hands. Maybe you know, there were those who tried to duck out of voting entirely. They used to tell about this one man who sat out a meeting, and a very important one, too, in the men's room. <laughs> <laughs> he was too scared to vote, so he just sat there trying to keep his nose clean. And did he? Oh, yes, but uh, they assigned him uh, a new job, a new specialty. Seeing how much he liked the men's room, they made him head man there in charge of the soap and towels. <laughs> Everything ready? Ready. Switch in all regions of the Federation simultaneously. They're cut in. Invest! 
investigation of the working habits of the proletariat in the interest of a graphic comparative study of mores, we demand resurrection! Well,
mistaken for living in the past. You're talking a language I can't understand. Just like a dictionary of obsolete words. What does bad business mean? <laughs> business, business, let's see. Bohemia, Bleaky, Bogakov, business. Oh, yes, business, comma, bad. A kind of human activity that obstructed all other activity. Uh, yes, 50 years ago that Activity almost cost me my life. I, I even went so far as to, um, I tried to commit suicide. Suicide? What suicide? Oh. Hey, uh, suffragette, sugar, suggestive. Oh, here it is, suicide. You shot yourself? On orders from a court, from a revolutionary tribunal? No, on my own. On your own, out of carelessness? Oh, no, uh, out of love. <laughs> oh, come now. Out of love, one bears children or builds a bridge. But you, well, I must say. Oh, please let me out of this. I can't go through with it. It certainly is. A, how did you put it? A bad business. <laughs> a bad business, I must say. Society expects you to manifest all the feelings you can muster so as to make it as easy as possible for this patient we are about to decrease to overcome 50 antibiotic years. Oh my, yes, your presence here is very important. I'm so glad that he and she turned up and came here. He is he, and you are she. Tell me where his eyelids friends are. They might break in the course of rapid unsleep. <laughs> Comrade Professor, how can I possibly remember eyelids that existed 50 years ago? What? 50 years ago? It was only yesterday. How do you think I remember the color of the hairs on the tail of a mastodon that lived half a million years ago? I must say, would you know whether his nostrils are strongly dilated by his breathing in the presence of excited company? Comrade Professor, how can I possibly remember? It's been 30 years since people dilated their nostrils in such situations. All right, all right. And do you know the size of his stomach and liver in the event of a possible excretion of alcohol that might ignite it behind this voltage we've used? How can I? Remember such things, comrade professor. I recall that he had a stomach of sorts. Oh, you don't remember anything, comrade Veratina. But at least you can tell me whether he was impulsive, can't you? I don't know. Perhaps he was, but not with me. Mm, I see, I see. Well, it seems that while we've been defrosting him, you've been freezing up. Oh, oh my, yes. Well, let's get on with it. Switch on the current when I give you the signal. Bring the temperature up to 97 degrees at a rate of one tenth of a degree per second. Is the oxygen tank ready? <laughs> Let the water drain off gradually to replace the ice with air pressure. Raise the lid immediately. Watch the stages of his revival in the mirror. Let's go. <laughs> His natural color is coming back. He's free from ice. His chest is heaving. Oh. Doctor, just look at these abnormal spasms. Oh. 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 The movements are normal. He's scratching himself. Oh. Obviously, the parasites typically found on such individuals are reviving. Doctor, something strange is happening. His left hand is moving away from his body. Oh, he was a music lover. Uh, a, a, what they used to call a, a sensitive soul. Uh, in ancient times, there was a man named Stradivarius and a man named Utkin. Stradivarius made violins and Utkin made uh, oh, other things. They called them guitars. 97 degrees. Pulse 68. Respiration even. Uh, to your places. Oh, my, what a good sleep I had. Oh, my apologies, comrades, but I was pretty drunk, you know. <laughs> what oh, police station am I in? Am I in the cooler? This isn't a cooler. It's a Defroster. We 
melted the ice from your cutaneous integument, which you had allowed to get frostbitten. What? You're the ones who are frostbitten. Oh. We'll soon see who is really drunk, you doctors, always sniffing around the alcohol. Uh, no matter, no matter, no matter. I, I can prove my identity. I, uh, uh, I've got my papers on me. Uh, uh, Revolutionary Firefighters Fund. Hey! Um, uh, National Defense Fund. Check. Uh, Anti Illiteracy Fund. Okay. Uh, what's this? A marriage certificate. Oh, that's right, I got married yesterday. Where are you now? Who's kissing your freaking hips? Oh, they'll be hell to pay when I get home. <laughs> Here's a receipt from the wedding attendants. And oh, oh, here's my union card. Oh, look at this, it's Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, May 12th, 1979. <laughs> 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 Comrades, in the shade, I should tell you about all these amazing and ominous events in the order of their occurrence. First things first, pass me some tangerines, will you? 
The municipal authorities were right to make the trees tangerine today. Yesterday, all we had was pears. No juice, no taste, no food value. Well, come now, comrade. Tell us the whole story in detail and in chronological order. Well, you see, oh, how juicy each little section is. You sure you don't want some? All right, I'll tell you. But how impatient you are. <laughs> Naturally, as dean of the press corps, I know the whole story. And I'll tell it to you. Or oh, just look at that man. He's a veterinarian. The epidemic is spreading. <laughs> when it was left alone, the resurrected mammal made friends with all the domestic animals in the skyscraper, and now all the dogs have gone mad. He taught them how to stand on their hind legs. Now they don't bark or frisk about anymore. All they do is hold down their jobs. They pester everyone at the dinner table, fawning and licking boots. The doctors say any humans bitten by these dogs will show the first signs of epidemic boot licking. transitional stage of existence, the doctors prescribed a beverage that is toxic in large doses and revolting in small ones. Beer, it's called. <laughs> the noxious fumes made the doctors dizzy, and some of them even mistakenly took a swig of that refreshing mixture. Since then, there have been three complete turnovers of medical staff. <laughs> Devastated. They brought in medical experts for a consultation. The doctors all said it was an acute attack of love. <laughs> the name given to a disease of ancient times where sexual energy, which should be rationally distributed over one's entire <laughs> life, is suddenly concentrated into one inflammation, lasting about a week, leading to absurd and incredible behavior. Oh, I better not look anymore. I can just feel those terrible love microbes spreading through the air. She's ready too. Another ready victim. This epidemic is growing to the size of an ocean. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. 
but things with me are disgusting. If you don't arrange for a new shift in here every half hour, he'll infect all of us. Every time he breathes, it makes me weak in the knees. I've already installed seven plans to clear the air of his exhalations. You! resurrect me and now you're insulting me. This is like lemonade for an elephant. Society hopes to bring you up to the human level. To hell with society, oh. to hell with you. I never asked to be resurrected. You reason me back to where I was. I don't know what you're talking about. Our lives belong to the collective, and neither I nor anyone else has well, a right. Well, what kind of life is it if you can't even pin up a picture of your girlfriend on the wall? These tacks, they won't go into the damn glass walls if you... <laughs> Professor, 
Give me some more hair oh. of the dog. Oh, right, just so you don't breathe in my direction. Oh, there. something that makes my heart stand still. Oh, um, well, the second is by somebody named uh, Mussolini. <laughs> <laughs> the title is Letters from Exile. <laughs> no. <laughs> this is not meant for the soul. Please stop bothering me with these crude propaganda books. I want something that plucks at the strings of my... I don't know what you're talking about. Makes my heart stand still. Plucks at the strings of... What is all that? What is all that? Well, what did we fight for? Why spill our blood if I, as a leader in this new society, can't enjoy learning the new dance steps and so on? I demonstrated your movements to, to the director of the Institute of Calisthenics, and he says he remembers seeing things like that in, in the old collections of French postcards, but um, that today there, there isn't even anybody we could ask about those kinds of things. There are a couple of old women who remember those dance steps, but mm -hmm. they can't demonstrate them on account of their rheumatism. Well, then what good was it for me to acquire such a thoroughly elegant education? Or working is a thing I could have done even before the revolution. Well, tomorrow, I'll take you to see a dance performed. 10,000 male and female workers will move across a public square. It'll be a glorious rehearsal of a new system of field work on the farms. All right, I object. I did not unfreeze just so you could dry me up.
remembers like it was now. You remember like it was now, but I remember how it was before. Oh, but I remember like it was now, how it was before. And I remember how it was before that. Long, long before that. <laughs> I remember like it was now and how it was before. So you forget. Uh, quiet, eyewitnesses, all this me, please. Souls of our youth be strengthened by these evil examples. Oh, 
express my gratitude to our next speaker, our famous director here at the zoo, who untangled the meaning of these strange events and turned a baleful phenomenon into gay and instructive entertainment. Yeah! Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, excreted in such 
such amounts that could not be called mere bird droppings. <laughs> come on, come on. But no matter, for you will see for yourself. Oh, Tomorrow! 